What is up guys, I'm Celis Williams, aka this Wolf Fester, here to educate you on health, fitness, social well-being. Today guys, we're gonna be talking about can you maximize your strength potential on a given lift within proper form? Now, those of you who've been watching this channel long enough probably know what my answer is gonna be. You guys know that I constantly express the importance of proper technique, whether your goals are maximizing your strength or maximizing your muscle growth, that we wanna focus on proper form because it's gonna allow us to lift stronger for longer. Of course, we know that when it comes to getting stronger, maximizing our muscle growth is important. When it comes to maximizing our muscle growth, getting stronger is important. And if we wanna look at individual instances, it's something as simple as, okay, whether it's making sure that we're properly hitting depth in the squat, or make sure that we're fully extending at the bottom of our curls, better range of motion, more proper form is going to allow us to recruit more total muscle fibers, which is gonna allow us to produce more total muscle mass. From my hypertrophy standpoint, that makes a lot of sense. And the same thing with, you know, trying to maximize our strength. Obviously, the more efficient our form is, the less form breakdown we have, the more efficient the lift's gonna be, the better force transfer we're gonna to get to the bar, and the more total weight we are going to lift. So, with that being said, my answer simply is this. You will never, maximize your strength potential on a given lift if you have faulty movement patterns. Now, keep in mind, techniques never go in battle. You're always going to have to do work to make sure that you're keeping your technique up to the best that you possibly can. But all I'm simply saying is that, quite frankly, if you have crappy form on a lift, you will never maximize your strength potential on said lift. It does not mean that you will not get stronger on said lift. Heck, it doesn't even mean that you won't be stronger than everybody else around you on said lift, that you won't be competitive like, you know, in your weight class on said lift if you're a power lifter. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying that you as an individual will never maximize your own potential on that lift if you don't take the time to get stronger. And that's the thing, a lot of people like have been like asking me recently, I've been seeing different talks about this going on, and due to those talks, people are asking me questions like, hey, so, okay, what if you're somebody where, you know, we understand proper form helps you live strong for longer, helps prevent injuries, et cetera, but what if you're somebody where you're just like one of those freaks where you don't really get hurt, like you don't get hurt, you don't get injured, even when you have really garbage form, or what if you are somebody that I described, where like you're, you know, you're that person where you are at the top of your weight class, or you're just stronger than everybody else in your group of friends, is it worth going back, breaking your form down, and trying to rebuild it back up with better movement patterns if it means you're gonna to have to suffer that temporary loss of strength, which more often than not, you do. Why? Well, because if you're having to change the movement pattern, it's almost like you're relearning the lift, right? So there's gonna be a temporary loss of strength because you're not gonna go as heavy as what you have been because you have to build the movement pattern back up. Is it worth it? So the first thing that I'll say, guys, is that the, I think it is worth it, but the only exception being, which is not the majority of you watching, is if you really are, let's say you're that dude where you're like the top, one of the top dudes, in your weight class and powerlifting, you've been lifting for years, you've been powerlifting for years, and you've been like lifting with certain movement patterns for years. At that point, if your goal is to just be as competitive for as long as you can be, regardless of what detriment it may have to your body in the long run, if you don't care about that, then yeah, it's probably not worth it to go back and change your form. Maybe make whatever little adjustments you can that aren't gonna cause a huge drop in your strength, but the reality is, if you're just trying to stay up there and be as competitive as you can, if you go back and change your form, you're gonna have a loss of strength, and then, whoever's right behind you is probably gonna pass you up and catch you and everyone else is gonna to continue to get building up, getting stronger with their current movement patterns while you're busy trying to relearn others. That doesn't apply to the majority of you. That's also why I strongly suggest learning the proper movement patterns in the first place because even if you do stay at the top for you know as long as you can, you're still not going to maximize your individual strength potential on that lift. You won't ever be as strong as what you could be on that lift. Now, like I said, for the rest of us, that usually doesn't apply. For one, most people do deal with Hey, most people, especially like, you know, not so much with general strength training, which I did a video explaining the difference between general strength training and powerlifting, I'll have that link down below. But in terms of like powerlifting, for example, most people do deal with some types of aches and pains over time anyway, even if they are doing everything correctly, just because of the nature of the sport of putting such heavy loads um, on your body repeatedly, right? Especially, and then it gets even worse if we aren't taking care of overuse injuries through the use of variation movements, accessory work, proper mobility, etc. But, the reality is we still want to try to minimize that as much as possible, right? And that's where the proper form comes into play. And on top of that, once again, guys, the reality is even if you're not dealing with a bunch of aches and injuries, you will not be able to maximize force transfer to the bar if you have crappy movement patterns. It's like, once again, for example, let's say you're someone where you are hitting depth on the squat, right? You are a power lifter, so if you're not hitting depth on the squat, it doesn't count. So let's assume that even if you have crappy movement patterns, you're at least doing that. You're still not gonna maximize how much you can squat, why? Because if you don't have proper bracing, 
if you if your technique's so bad to where like you can't stay as upright as possible in the hole and you're losing tightness and folding over like a lawn chair, eventually your squats can become a good morning. Where yeah, you squat down, you fold over like a lawn chair, and then you face at the good morning the way back up. It doesn't mean that you can't get stronger that way. It doesn't mean that you know you still won't squat five, six hundred, seven pounds, however much the weight may be, but you'll never squat as much as what you actually could because you're eventually gonna get to the point where you hit a wall to where your back can no longer sustain you basically good morning that much weight because it's a amount of weight that maybe you can squat but not good morning but you're not truly doing a true squat anymore so that's one obvious example where it's like okay working on the form is worth it and if you aren't too far into like you know your power or whatever it may be or even if you are if you're like especially for someone where you're not the top of so you're not that rare exception it's worth going back and changing it because you're going to get stronger in the long run yes you'll deal with that temporary loss of strength but you'll build it back up and blow past where you were stalling where you're plateauing because now you have better movement pattern development right so it's worth it for that reason. You're never gonna be able to squat as much as you possibly can if you can't stay tight enough right. You're never gonna bench as much as you possibly can if you can't properly hold your retraction and depression if you're always caving in as soon as the bar touches your chest. You're never gonna deadlift as much as you possibly can if you can't properly um, distribute tension equally throughout all the muscles involved in the movement. So that's why it's worth doing that. Now, beyond that, if we look at it from the standpoint of like, you know, well, let's say that, well, yeah, okay, you say that ourselves, but look, these guys are still getting like, really strong, really fast, um, even though like, you know, their movement patterns maybe aren't great, maybe they won't lift as much as what they potentially can, but they're still beating everybody else. Isn't that what matters in powerlifting? But think about this, guys, from the standpoint of, once again, preventing injuries, if you get to a point where your form is so garbage and you're dealing with all these aches and injuries where it becomes chronic and severe to where you can't even lift anymore, then it doesn't even matter. What good is it the fact that you're at the top, if you can no longer even stay there, you can't even power lift anymore, you can't even lift weights anymore because you're in so much pain. And I see it all the time, guys. I've seen people where, due to overuse injuries, because they were so focused on getting so strong so quickly, just blasting their bodies with volume and intensity with zero disregard to how well they were able to maintain proper movement patterns. Yeah, they got strong really quickly, but then they hit a wall. For example, if you're someone where maybe you have a very quad down and squat, you just break the knees really quickly, you don't break at the knees and the hips at the same time. You don't have proper distribution of tension throughout your squat. You're just breaking at the knees. And you keep doing that with more volume, more loads, and eventually the point where your knees are screwed. You have severely screwed up your knees. So what do you start doing? Okay, well, to keep the pressure on my knees, now I'm gonna sit back really, really hard into my squat. And now you're breaking too much at the hips first. And now, once again, at the bottom of that squat, you're folded over and you're coming up like a good morning. Therefore, once again, due to that fact, you will never maximize as much as you could actually potentially squat. So this is why guys, outside of just from the fact of like, you know, just being more optimal, why I think people should stop thinking of this so much as an option and start thinking of this as mandatory. This is why with my clients, I make sure that I incorporate, you know, phases where we're just focusing on movement development, especially if like, as we're, if we're in a volume phase or more of a strength building phase, we start seeing like issues. It's like, okay, that's something that we need to address when we go back into a movement development phase through, you know, proper technique work, variation work, building up muscular weakness, etc. That's why Brennan does the same thing with me and all of his clients, because it's that vital, it's that important. And unfortunately, sometimes people have to go through beating themselves up with bad form and bad technique, et cetera, before they come to the realization of how important this is. But I want you guys to come to that realization before getting to that point. I want those of you, especially those of you who are just now getting into this, or even if you're not just now getting into this, like if you're a beginner, enemy lifter, if you're not some crazy advanced lifter, there, you have so much time to still go back and work on these things. And for some of you, it won't even take that long. Some of you have minor adjustments to make. Some of you may need a full overhaul, but it's always worth it because at the end of the day, you're gonna be able to maximize your strength potential, you're gonna deal with less pains and injuries, and you're just gonna be better for it as overall as a whole. So that's why I think it's worth it. That's why, in my opinion, no, you're not gonna maximize your strength potential on any given movement with improper form. And even if you could, why not do it with proper form if you can? Why not do it in a way that's gonna be safer for your body and better for you as far as your overall health and longevity? That's the thing that people have to understand, guys. I understand from the sense of powerlifting is more of a competitive endeavor. It's about being competitive. It's not so much focused on health, kind of like with bodybuilding. It's not the healthiest thing to do going back and forth through extreme bulks and then cutting down a single digit body fats, but it's more a competitive endeavor. I get that, but for a lot of you, you guys just wanna, you wanna get bigger, you wanna get stronger. So go about it the right way, but yeah. That's pretty much all I have to say about that, guys. That's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you did not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can do to get better. Like the video, share. 
subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later.